All right, so yesterday, one of the things that I was doing was constructing a query with year to date, and specifically, I was looking at um, fiscal year, and I ran into a bit of a problem, and the problem was not with the query, but the problem was with me. I was uh, forgetting that with fiscal year, we have completely different uh, date ranges. So let me try to set up something similar to what we have going here. So let's take uh, sales. on columns, and then I'm going to say that I want um, dates. So we know, for example, if I try to take the year-to-date function and do uh, off of calendar, and I give it a point in time, then that's going to return a set of months starting from the beginning of the year. So there we have January through July. So the year-to-date function, when I give it a value, looks at the, the time period, and it has to have the, uh, the definition in the database for the date dimension has to be specified with a type of time and then years and quarters and months and so forth have to be set also with a type so that analysis services knows what's a year and what's a quarter and what's, um, what's a uh, month, what's a date, what's a week. And uh, someone said they don't see the link so I'm going to copy that and paste it back in here for you. So there's the, the correct link for yesterday's recording. So with the year-to-date function, or with the month-to-date function or the quarter-to-date function, it's the same idea. I can produce a set, and if I provide a, a period of time in there, it will figure out, well, this is at the month level. I need to go to the beginning month of that year, so it knows what year this is associated with and will uh, bring back the appropriate uh, time period. Similarly, if I were to go to quarter to date and do something like, uh, let's say, June of 2007, then it's going to go to the beginning of the quarter that June belongs to and give back those months. So this is the month to date, quarter to date, and so forth are giving me sets of date members. So what I ran into yesterday, my problem was I was trying to uh, look at, well, we did determine that, that year-to-date did not work with the fiscal time period, but we have an alternate function that really does the same thing, and that's called periods-to-date. And actually, periods-to-date will work with any dimension. It does not require a, a time dimension set up. It just looks with the, within the hierarchy and goes to the beginning of that particular um, to, the, to the first child of the parent of the member that we specify, if you follow all that logic. So whatever member we provided, it will go up one and then come back down that hierarchy to the very first member. And uh, so then that's going to be dependent upon the correct order property set on those dimensions. So my problem with the fiscal time period yesterday was that um, in this particular example, fiscal actually, the fiscal year actually starts with July. And so that was the error in my logic as I kept looking at that, why am I getting just July? Well, that was just because it was the first uh, month. But if I were to, say, use December, then I should get 
uh, oh, I need a level. I need to specify that my periods to date is based on the year. So, it, so, so where year to date knows that I'm dealing with the year as my reset point, periods to date needs me to tell that explicitly. So there I have for December 2007, the beginning of the fiscal year is July, so it picks up the range of dates from the beginning of the year to whatever time period that I specified. So that's what I was trying to do yesterday, and I, my mind got a little boggled as we were approaching the end of our time together, and uh, I just didn't connect the dots. And, and one of our good students in class said, Stacia, am I not understanding you? <laughs> and straightened me out. I would have figured it out eventually. But, uh, but at any rate, that's our deal with the periods today. That gets us a range of dates accordingly. Now, there's other ways that we use this information. If you remember yesterday, in fact, let me hop back to that slide real quickly, uh, where we had a, an example of a set-based calculation. And in Excel, we could use a sum function to view a range of dates and just have that uh, that range change dynamically row by row. And we do that very similarly in our MDX by using the year-to-date function uh, as one argument of an aggregate function. So we have an aggregate function called sum which takes as its first argument a set of members and then applies um, whatever aggregation is involved. In this case, it's a sum, but we could use min or max or count. Uh, but it would take that set of members and then apply whatever numeric value uh, we're, we're using as the second argument to that, um, that sum function. So in other words, it'll take the year-to-date range that gets computed and take the sales amount for each one of those members and add them up in this particular case. So in that case, let's go back to the uh, example here and let's add a calculation into this query. So I'll add a with clause and I can create a measure. We'll call this the um, sales year to date as and then I'll just use the year-to-date function here. So I'm going to take uh, the sum, and then you can see the first argument there is some set, and we know that year-to-date returns a set, and then I would provide uh, some value that I want to sum up. 